Here we'll learn about clostridium, which are gram-positive spore-forming rod bacteria. To begin, write that clostridia are rapid-growing and thrive in anaerobic conditions, such as the intestinal tract, sewage, water, and soil. Pathogenic strains produce histolytic toxins, enterotoxins, and neurotoxins. In this tutorial, we'll learn about the following four strains that cause infection in humans. Clostridium difficile, which causes diarrhea and colitis. Clostridium perfringens, which causes gas gangrene and food poisoning. Clostridium tetanae, which causes tetanus. And Clostridium botulinum, which causes botulism. Let's begin with Clostridium difficile. Write that it's transmitted via the fecal oral route and that it's a common colonizer of the human colon. It's historically associated with hospitalized patients, but we've seen a rise in community acquired cases as well. A major cause of Clostridium difficile infection is antibiotics that suppress the non pathogenic colonic flora, which allows the opportunistic C. difficile to flourish. Virulence factors include potent toxins, indicate that toxin A is an enterotoxin that attracts neutrophils, which release cytokines. Toxin A also increases intestinal wall permeability by attacking colonic epithelial tight junctions. Toxin B is a cytotoxin that acts on enterocyte actin to destroy cytoskeletal integrity. Some strains of C. diff produce binary toxin, also referred to as C. diff transferase, CDT. The role of binary toxin in C. diff infection is uncertain. Some studies suggest that binary toxin increases bacterial adherence to host cells and promotes cell death, whereas others suggest that the toxin suppresses eosinophil activity. It's possible that the toxin has multiple virulence effects. Show that C. diff infection acts on the colon, where it induces a range of gastrointestinal issues, from mild diarrhea to severe colitis. Pseudomembranous colitis is the most severe form of C. diff infection. In the image, we can see the yellowish-white exudate on the mucosal surface of the colon. The pseudomembrane comprises fibrin and inflammatory cells in the mucus. Withdrawal of the associated antibiotic often suffices to treat diarrheal symptoms. However, write that metronidazole or vancomycin can be administered in more severe cases. Unfortunately, C. diff colitis relapse is common, and patients with multiple relapses may benefit from fecal microbiota transfer from a healthy donor, which replenishes the healthy bacteria in the colon. Next, let's learn about Clostridium perfringens. Write that its spores are rarely seen clinically and that colonies are flat and irregular. It's beta hemolytic. C. perfringens can be divided into subtypes based on toxin production. Let's first address the mechanism of C. perfringens soft tissue infection. Indicate that alpha toxins, which are present in all C. perfringens subtypes, cause hemolysis vascular leakage, liver toxicity, and cardiac dysfunction. Several other toxins form pores and or induce necrosis. Write that Clostridium perfringens causes a range of soft tissue infections, including cellulitis, fasciitis, myositis, and myonecrosis. We show an example of myonecrosis, also referred to as gas gangrene, which is a light threatening disease that destroys muscle tissue. Bacterial metabolic activity produces characteristic gas bubbles which appear as purplish black bulges under the skin. Tissue necrosis and other complications can lead to death. Treatment for Clostridium perfringens soft tissue infections includes antibiotics and surgical debridement of necrotic tissues. Proper wound care is essential for prevention of infection. Next, indicate that Clostridium perfringens causes food poisoning via enterotoxins that alter the intestinal membrane permeability, leading to fluid and ion loss. Like some other bacterial toxins, this enterotoxin is a super antigen. 
Australian perfringens food poisoning typically results from consumption of contaminated meat products. The enterotoxin acts on the small intestine to produce abdominal cramps and watery diarrhea without fever or vomiting. Treatment includes rehydration. Antibiotics are not recommended because this type of food poisoning is self-limited. Prevention is achieved by refrigerating foods and thorough reheating to at least 74 degrees Celsius. Next, indicate that Clostridium tetanae has a distinctive tennis racket shape during spore formation. It's extremely oxygen sensitive and spores can survive for extended periods of time in the soil. Infection typically occurs when wounds encounter contaminated soil. Wounds provide ideal necrotic and anaerobic environments for Clostridium tetanae growth. Indicate that the key toxin is tetanospasmin, which is a heat labile neurotoxin that blocks the release of inhibitory neurotransmitters such as GABA and glycine. Show that the neurotoxin's endocytosed, then transported along axons to reach neuronal somas in the spinal cord. Because it blocks inhibitory neurotransmitter release, neuronal excitatory activity is unregulated. Tetanolysin is another toxin produced by Clostridium tetanae. It's an oxygen labile hemolysin thought to promote tissue necrosis. Indicate that tetanus is characterized by spastic paralysis. This can manifest systemically or locally as lockjaw, seen as a grimace or rhesus sardonicus, and obsithonus, in which spasms of the extensors of the head, neck, and back produce extreme back extension. Tetanus can also cause fever and sweating. Special cases of tetanus include cephalic tetanus, which involves the cranial nerves. Maternal tetanus, which is associated with pregnancy, specifically contamination during medical or spontaneous abortion and delivery. And neonatal tetanus, which occurs when infection spreads from the umbilical stump. Fortunately, vaccination effectively prevents tetanus. In the case of infection, wound debridement and Administration of metronidazole and antitoxins are necessary to prevent death. Finally, write that Clostridium botulinum causes foodborne disease. The spores tend to contaminate vegetables and meat, and its toxins are protected from degradation within the gastrointestinal tract. Clostridium botulinum produces exotoxins A through G. Write that types A, B, and E are responsible for most human infections. The toxins are preformed, particularly in canned goods, which provide ideal alkaline and anaerobic environments. From the gut, the neurotoxins are absorbed and delivered to motor neurons. Upon endocytosis, neurotoxins block acetylcholine release at peripheral motor junctions. Because this neurotoxin prevents muscle contraction, botulism is characterized by flaccid paralysis. Indicate that this type of paralysis manifests as a descending weakness with blurred vision with dilation of the pupils, dry mouth, and constipation. Respiratory failure can ensue and lead to death. Be aware that wound infection produces similar symptoms. In the U.S., this form is associated with injection drug use. Treatment includes metronidazole or penicillin and antitoxins. Respiratory support may be necessary, and gastric irrigation can aid in toxin removal. Prevention of botulism involves boiling of home canned goods and discarding damaged cans. Honey can contain Clostridium botulinum organisms, so it should not be given to infants because they have not yet acquired the competitive microflora that prevents Clostridium botulinum survival in adults. This concludes our diagram.